Yeah, so if you grab your big unit three packet, what we're gonna do today is just your first lesson. It's really easy. You don't even need a calculator out in front of you. It's just gonna look at standard form of a polynomial function, a couple of quick examples and what we call end behavior. So you're gonna be drawing some pictures. So you need your unit three packet out, please. So that is this one here. And again, we're just going to do your first lesson. Nothing difficult today. Okay, everyone find these. Perfect. Okay, so to get you started here, up on the top here, this is your general form of a polynomial function. I know it looks a little bit complicated. So if you pull apart all of these different terms, so the n in the front here is your exponent. This just means your degree. So whether this is a quadratic function, degree two, cubic degree three, so on and so forth. And then this a sub n right here, this just stands for your leading coefficient. And I'll give you a numerical example of this in a second too, to kind of help you relate to it a little bit better. So this is your leading coefficient. And for the purposes of your notes, homework, et cetera, if you want to just call that LC for leading coefficient, that's absolutely fine. So your next part, your a sub n x to the n, this is what we call a leading term. So this is your entire leading term. And just like over here, if you want to call that LT, that's fine. Not a problem. And then your last term, a sub 0, this just stands for the constant. So if your polynomial were to say like plus 10 on the end, let's just say for a constant. All right, let me throw in an example. So your polynomial function, let's say P of X is equal to, they're gonna look like this. So standard form. So how about two X to the third power plus four X squared, just making up some numbers, plus 10 X plus, Seven. That's what your polynomials are going to look like. So in this case, my degree would be three. My leading coefficient would be this two. Leading term would be the whole thing. And then a constant would be a stop. Okay. But so far? Okay. All right. So here's some examples. You've seen most of these in the past. A function that's just a constant function is just going to be y equals something. So I'll give you about like y equals seven. That's like your most basic example possible. So it's just a horizontal line. Leading coefficient, you don't really have one. Leading term, same thing. So I'll do this. We'll just say that those are both seven. Your degree, you don't have an exponent. So your degree is just zero. And again, your degree just refers to your exponent. Okay, leading a function. We've seen these before. So this is going to be like y equals mx plus b. So let's make a number up here. How about like 3x plus 10? That is a linear function. Your linear function, your leading coefficient is just in front of the x. So that would be a 3. Your leading term is the whole thing. So your leading term is 3x. And then your degree is always the exponent on that x, which in this case is just a 1. So n is equal to just one. The next one, you did a lot of work with this so far this year. This is your quadratic function. So your quadratic function, I'm gonna go y is equal to how about two x squared plus four x plus six. Basic example. So in this case, your leading coefficient is just gonna be the two in front of the x squared. And your leading term, the entire thing is just going to be the 2x squared. And your degree is a 2. Okay, good so far? All right, next type of function you're going to look at is a cubic function. So I am going to go, how about y equals 4x cubed plus 6x squared? I'm going to skip one and we'll go like plus 7. 
So this leading coefficient is just going to be a four. And then the leading term, again, is the entire thing. So I'm going to go 4x cubed because these are already in standard form for you. And then my degree is just going to be okay. Yep. Again, pretty self-explanatory. You just you do always want to make sure these are in standard form to be able to pull that leading term. And then a quartic function, this one might be new to you. This is just degree four. So this is going to be like y is equal to um, how about six x to the fourth? I'm going to skip some because I know you don't have a lot of space. Plus two x plus Again, they just have to be in standard form, highest power down the lowest. So in this case, my leading coefficient is going to be a six. Leading term is the entire thing when arranged in standard form. And degree of this polynomial would be a four. Easy so far? It's vocabulary with polynomial functions. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is take these, and you will be able to classify them into one of four categories. You are not going to be graded on your artistic ability, okay? Because these graphs are a little bit difficult to draw. So end behavior refers to what is happening on the ends of the graph. So what you're going to be looking for is the direction of your arrows. So you have four cases for these. So this picture is going to look a little bit different. So number one, you're going to have n is equal to an even degree. So you have an even degree. So your degree could be like two, four, six, et cetera. So your degree could be like a two, a four. Again, same thing over here. Your degree for even is going to be a degree two polynomial, four, six, et cetera. Now, the difference between picture one and two is picture one says that a sub n is greater than zero. So what this means is that your leading coefficient is positive. And then this one means my leading coefficient is negative. Okay. And here's one example of picture. So degree two positive leading coefficient, that means something like x squared. And what does x squared look like? It's a parabola that opens like this. And again, what we are looking at is what is called end behavior. So you're looking at those two arrows in what direction those are headed. So degree four polynomial, it looks really, really similar. But what you're going to do is kind of make it look more like a W, like that. But what we say about this is these both have the same end behavior. Wouldn't you agree the arrows are both going the same way? Mm -hmm. Let me show you another way you can draw these too, if you don't love that. If you flip to your homework, I'm looking for it. You guys see these pictures right here? You can also draw them like this and make little sharp, um, jagged places right through the middle. So this is another way to draw those too. Either way, they're not graded on your artistic ability. Don't worry about that. So now if I go over to my second case here, the only thing that's going to be different is my leading coefficient is now negative. So now I'm going to sketch, how about negative x squared? And then how about like negative x to the fourth? Anyone remember what these parabolas do instead? Instead of opening up, yeah, opens down. So that's going to be the end behavior. So these are both going to be decreasing instead. And then when you go to draw the negative x to the fourth, again, you can kind of do it something like that would work or those diagrams I just showed you too. But again, your arrows are going the same way. So those are first two cases. And the point of this is to be able to figure out what your graph looks like without leaving your calculator. So anytime you're even degree two, you're going to resemble those pictures. Anytime you're even, um, degree and then negative in the front, you're going to look like those. All right, next two pictures. So say your degree is odd. So this could be a degree of most common examples here would be like degree three, degree five, degree seven, etc. Same thing over here. These are going to be odd degrees. So like degree three, five, seven, etc. So 
on the left hand side, this means that my leading coefficient is going to be positive. And this means that my leading coefficient is going to be negative. All right, so let's throw just one example in here. So say you have a polynomial just x cubed. So x cubed is going to have this overall shape to it, like this. So basically this way you're going to head down and decrease and then to the right you're going to increase. Your arrow go opposite direction as opposed to your fingers above. Um, how about x to the fifth? And again, you can draw these pictures like this or you can model them after those um, multiple choices I just showed you. All you kind of do is just make it a little bit jagged in the middle like that. And again, it's going to do the same thing on the end. So left side's going to decrease. All I do is change my coefficient here and make it go the opposite direction. So if I have a negative x cubed now, what's this one going to do? It's going to start like this and go down like that. Okay, so your pictures are going to fall into each of these four categories. Because the only thing we're really kind of looking at here is what they're doing on the end. So again, drawing your attention, you don't have to do this in your notes if you don't want to. This is obviously doing the same exact thing as this right here. And in the middle, you don't really care what that's doing. You're just looking at things. Everybody on diagrams, okay? You're not good at your capability, so don't worry. You just want them to kind of resemble that. All right, so here's what we do with these. We are going to take them, classify them. We are going to determine the leading term, leading coefficient, and break. So just kind of putting everything together here. You may certainly abbreviate each if you'd like. So number one, classify the polynomial. First thing you want to check for is is this in standard form already? So I'll make you a little note there. Are we in standard form highest exponent down to lowest? Yes. So standard form, you're good to go. Classify the polynomial. So what degree is this polynomial? Yeah, good. Yep, we agree four, perfect. And then classify it. That is what we call a quartic polynomial. Oh, I'm sorry, that goes there. All right, and then it says state the leading term. Leading term, remember, is the whole time. It's actually what I just bracketed. So your leading term is going to be a one-fourth x to the fourth power, where the leading coefficient is one fourth. Okay. So if you go to draw a little sketch of this, what you would do is you would look at your pictures, and this is what we say even degree, and your leading coefficient is positive. So what is this going to look like? This is going to look like this picture right here. So again, all you would do is just make a little sketch. Good to go. Next polynomial that you are classifying. So again, I always want to check and make sure that I am in standard form. So is number two in standard form already? Yes. Otherwise, you just rearrange it. So we're going to say standard form check. Standard form check. All right. What is the name of this polynomial? Again, you guys did a ton of work with this already this year. Quadratic. Yep. And again, this has the overall shape of that parabola. This is quadratic, degree two. Take the leading term, the entire thing 7x squared with the leading coefficient of seven. And now what does this picture look like? Again, your degree is even. So you would look at either picture one or two from your notes, and then our leading coefficient is also positive. So it just looks like this. And your arrows open that direction. Right here. So this polynomial again, and I'm just making note of this. This is also in standard form already. So standard form check because I know once you get to homework, some of them you got to rearrange. Or if you don't want to rearrange it, you don't really have to. You're just going to look and find the term with the highest power. So classify this polynomial. What's this one called? Degree three. So cubic. Yep. This is the cubic. N equals three, because we use N for degree. 
Leading term is the entire x cubed. Leading coefficient is a one. So from your form of the unit, this one you're going to look at the bottom of two. So this one is a degree that's odd. So a degree is odd. And your leading coefficient is positive. So again, this is your picture that is scroll this, right here. So number three is what this matches up with. And you're just gonna do a sketch. Again, nothing crazy. Okay. All right, how do we deal with where those pictures come from, okay? All right, and again, you can make them look like this, or if you prefer and wanna make them look like one of those four, you can do that too, not picky. All right, so your last one here. Because which of the following functions models this relationship? So it says your output is equal to the difference between the sum of a cube of an input. So we've got like an x cubed with a plus and four times the square. So four times like x squared here. This one does not seem relevant whatsoever. And it says, and the product of implying parentheses. And I have five and the input being raised by seven. So which one is going to be being raised by seven? So it's one or three. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's pretty self explanatory, pretty easy, vocab based. Okay, let me explain two things for you and then I'll give you the rest of the time to get started on them. But those I am not checking till Tuesday. So you have these problems to complete. This is my backside, correct? Yeah, there is no backside. Nope. So these are the problems I want you to complete for homework. Uh, again, I am not checking these until Tuesday. You can kind of work at a leisurely pace on these if you'd like. So homework, just again, your front side only with this. Again, just draw the pictures to the best of your ability with those. And then if you scroll down to the very bottom of the sheet, and I apologize for the spacing, these are the notes that you're going to copy down tomorrow. So if you want to write Friday on this, and I'll show you where to find these. This kind of just gets into more of your characteristics of your polynomials. It goes over to the next page. Again, I apologize for the space, but these are the notes that you're going to be doing tomorrow. Okay. All right. Questions on any of that? Okay. And one last thing. I just want to be able to show you where you're going to find those. So let me flip. All right. Yep. Your notes for tomorrow are right here. This blue link that says lesson two notes. And I don't need you to do your lesson two problem set yet because we'll kind of do that next week. And don't forget, you also have those Delta math assignments. There's questions, I think we left off on like 14 through 20. So you'll have time, you know, today, time tomorrow, you wanna make sure you get those done too. All right, questions? All right, time is yours to get working on that problem set one. Or again, if you wanna work on those deltas, that's absolutely fine too.